People, welcome back to Politics Watch. This is Sir P. Now, in Jamaica, the word smart and intelligent is thrown around loosely when people talk about the various dons or leaders of criminal organizations. The reason why people do this is because people think say, it requires a certain level of brilliance to become the boss and make a bag of money in the drugs game. That is not the case. That is far from the truth. Some of the biggest juggies I can think of were complete simpletons, LIQs, right? As a matter of fact, most people listening to this right now know a juggies who did get rich, make a bag of money, and as fast as them get rich, it's as, it's as fast as all them end up broke again, right? People, the white powder sell itself, right? It sells itself. It's not like no, no phone or no care where you have put on over marketing and convince people. People come and look for you, forget it from you, right? In the whole Jamaican scheme of crime and badness and drugs and everything, in my opinion, the most naturally gifted, the most naturally talented and intelligent Don Jamaica has ever seen is Vivian Blake of the Shower Posse. Right. Now, understand. On the thumbnail, you see it said Jamaica's most well educated Don. I'm not talking about somebody who, you know, them do them bachelors and them masters and them PhD and them turn professor. I'm not talking about necessarily formal education and paper. I'm talking about being naturally intelligent, just having a brilliant mind. The overwhelming majority of criminals in Jamaica cannot get um, that kind of accolade. Even most dons, as I say, really. People, remember I said that danship really build around coercion and force, intimidation. Those are what dance used to get to the top and stay at the top. And corruption and can buy out the money and buy out the politician and buy out the police. I'm talking about brains. Vivian Blake, in my opinion, is the most intelligent or was the most intelligent Don Jamaica has ever seen. Now let me clear up the word Don as it relates to Vivian Blake. Vivian Blake was not your regular street, area, lane, community done. Don't think of him as a done in the sense that like oh yeah that think about a Willie Agard, or oh yeah that think about Machine Man from Young Maxfield, or oh yeah that think about um, even Dodos. Not even oh yeah that think about Dodos. Vivian Blake was never really the man where you know, the community had run off the place and locked the corner. Remember, people, Vivian Blake spent a lot of time, time at Farin. He was really shower posse, and shower posse, majority of the operation was being done abroad. Now, when people think shower posse, the first name that comes to mind is often Jim Brown, or is, is the real name Lester Lloyd Coke. However, people have to understand this. In shower posse, Vivian Blake was the brains, and Jim Brown was the muscle. Jim Brown was the more brute force, kick you down, back you down, come for you, wet you up and all kind of foolishness. That was more Jim Brown style. Hence the reason why Jim Brown became more infamous. Jim Brown is more, is more well known, right? More, more artists sing about him, more, more Jamaicans hear Jim Brown name and obviously because of that strange death he had in himself, he's just more known in the public, right? But it was Vivian Blake who was the brains of Shower Posse. Shower Posse became what it was through the strategies and ideas of Vivian Blake. Jim Brown was the enforcer, right? As I say, he was the quote-unquote more traditional done, even though he spent a few time referring to. But Vivian Blake was the brains. Now, let me tell you just a little brief background to Vivian Blake. See, Vivian Blake, um, he was born in 56, right? And obviously, them time they were talking about extreme serious poverty, right? Vivian Blake come from Rona, Rona West Kingston, right? It's a place where born and grow, right? But people understand this. Vivian Blake did something that was extraordinary for its time. Vivian Blake was so brilliant in school, right? I'm talking about natural brilliance here, kind of brain they have just born with where he earned a scholarship to 
to St. George's College. Now, that might not mean much these days. I mean, I don't know how the whole scholarship thing will know. But back then, to get a scholarship to St. George's College, back then, people. George's is now considered just one of the, the top schools in Jamaica. But back then, St. George's College was one of the most elite, one of the most stuck up, one of the most nose in the ear schools in Jamaica. So when they talk about when traditional people talk about how oh, schools are elitist and, and, and don't let in certain people, that was St. George's College. The George's old boy them were listen to my channel can probably testify in the comment section. Back in the day, George's was known for being an elite institution when you deal with certain type of people. If you got into George's, the people in my feed come from a certain background, i.e. wealth, right? Or you have to be or you have to have an extraordinary level of natural um, intelligence. If yes, all of them test to the point they just can't tell you no. When you watch the documentaries about Shaw Pasi and you read all the literature surrounding Shaw Pasi, you will see a common theme. Even the Americans, even the Feds were impressed with just how brilliant uh, Vivian Blake was. If when you when you listen to how the Feds talk about Jamaican gangsters, they always talk about them. They, they don't come out and say yeah, them don't sound fool fool. But they always talk about them from just a brute force point of view. They're like, yeah, they're killers and they'll do this and they do that. They never ever acknowledge their brains. Vivian Blake is the only that I've ever seen the feds consistently rave about how brilliant it was. Um, he was. As a matter of fact, I remember an interview where the man was saying, listen, this man was so intelligent that if he, chan if he channeled his energy into something positive, there's no limit to what he could have been. I don't remember if it was... um. I don't, I don't know if that interview is still on YouTube, it's probably somewhere you can find it. But some big man in the feds was saying, this brother here, if he just channeled this energy into something positive and become something else, he, would have been, he could have had a serious impact on Jamaica. But Vivian Blake channeled his energy into the shower party and obviously the drug business and the, we, we all know how shower party turned out in the end. Right, and people, we know the conspiracies, we've heard them, right? To be fair, at this point, I don't even think they're conspiracies anymore, they're, it's pretty well known, right? So, the, the connection with them, they have to certain politicians, um, people even link them to the CIA and all kind of things, right? But what I want to focus on here is the fact that Vivian Blake is, a, is an example of what happens when somebody with a brilliant mind turns down the wrong path. Because, as the saying goes, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. I would say, a great mind is a terrible thing to waste. And that's how I look at Vivian Blake. A complete waste. Vivian Blake, I think if he channeled his energy into something like politics or something like that, um, or even maybe the legit business world, I don't know, the impact he could have had would have been extraordinary and he would be remembered for different things as opposed to being the leader of an organization that was responsible for over 1,400 murders. And that's where they count. That's where the counting stop. The reason why most Jamaicans don't talk about Vivian Blake the way they talk about certain of the other big dance, them like Skengden and them money, is because most Jamaicans never see Vivian Blake in a prime. Because as I said, Vivian Blake thing was really mostly foreign. Right, he spent a lot of his time in America around dealing with show up as business over there. So Jamaicans never got to see him or walk up and down in the streets and do the theme thing and all these things. But people, the money will show up as he make. In Adam Prime, make almost every other organization in Jamaica look like a joke. Right? We know enough people are going to tell us, yo, that money from down the road and that money from down the road. And the, the, my down over here, so my down over here. So people, again, Enough people cannot compare to Vivian Blake because they never see Vivian Blake, right? Enough man go in a party, go see Skengdan. Enough man go in a party, go see Willie Agard, Aflas. Enough man go in a party, go see this man and that man. Enough man here said that man you buy the carrier and buy the house. So these, the man who do them thing at Jamaica, people know them story, them business on the streets. People, when Vivian Blake them, did they are foreign and make money. Show up, I say, did I spend 100,000, 200,000 US 
in a two three day like it was a joke like it was a complete joke only the man they moved up on that side of foreign them time they can probably tell you about show posse and vivian blake the money where them did all never normal and in 1988 it ended up catch up on him vivian blake was indicted yep my name come for him 37 counts of racketeering and conspiracy right 37 right he was also linked to, to eight murders four attempted murders and charged for smuggling over 1000 tons of the white powder in america now people might wonder to themselves but so do you mean eight murder and four attempted people understand when time the feds are come for you even if they know say your organization responsible for 1400 murders they're not gonna come and try and drop when they initially lock you up then they need to drop 1400 murders by your head top right they only need to hold up on three or four get up behind bars and then when time they start bringing the rest of them them now and, and, and everybody start leak like an ice truck then time they them start drop everything by your head top so they need only need a eight case just to bring in vivian blake right but people Vivian Blake end up runway. In runway, I come back to Jamaica. Right? Come back to Jamaica and obviously was out here for a while. Then in 1994, he was extradited to the US. People a long time when I get extradited, you know. Right? A long, long time. Right. He got extradited back to the US in 1999. Right. Where this is where Vivian Blake history and his reputation took a turn for the worse right well from 88 really right because tivoli man name this start to say vivian blake he looked like vivian blake and farmer because when he got arrested enough look man he start far left right and center but people let me tell you something when i did my video the other day telling you that gangsters bad man are the biggest informers in the world this is a perfect example Show up, posse. An organization with some of the most ruthless man them we've ever seen, yard and abroad. Turned out for have some of the biggest informers the world has ever seen, yard and abroad. People, there were people in Show up, posse who did I get charged for over 100 murders, right? When I, there, was, there was an individual by the name of Kirk Bruce, right? He confessed, he confessed to over 100 and he rejected another set where he said he didn't claim them one day, right? We're talking about some men who were ruthless. That same Kirk Bruce, he became one of the main informers against Vivian Blake. People, show a posse, turned into an informer competition. Man start compete for who can be the, the biggest informer, who can call the most name. So it turns out Vivian Blake started to get the reputation, say, in my farm, in my league, and I met this something to the money, and Tivoli people them say, I met the farm and Jim Brown um, back in the 88, I'm a work with the feds for a long time. These rumors started to go around people. Now, here's the thing even though Vivian Blake was the brains of Shua Pasi, he never had the, the same connection to Tivoli that Jim Brown had, because as I said, Jim Brown was more underground in a Tivoli and then when he left when he left go foreign then Jati would have run the place um, don't worry yourself I will give you the whole Jim Brown Jati scenario I have the whole Coke family thing coming up right because a lot of people think say Jati start um, getting at the done thing when him father get locked no, Jim, when Jim Brown go off foreign it was Jati who did a run garden but don't worry yourself people we are getting at that in our next video anyway because the people them did love Jim Brown more than they love Vivian when it did come down to hearing say Vivian Blake and inform upon Jim Brown, that was the rumors. Right? Because at this point, uh, there's nothing to say that he was officially an informer. He did become an informer down the road. Right? And you're going to see based upon all him sentence and everything. Right? But at that time, who knows? Anyway, people, Mr. Vivian Blake, after being pointed out as the leader, because at this point, man, I leak, man, I inform upon him, I inform upon man. Vivian Blake started to give information, precious information. But I think the information where they get from Vivian Blake is not the kind of information where they want from, say, a 87 like Kurt Bruce and them Monday, right? Or, or even Morrison and them there. People, 
Vivian Blake as the leader of the organization. The information they want from him is the kind of information where they want from Jim Brown. For example, who not are linked with Jamaica? Who are the important politicians in the deal with Jamaica? That's the kind of information they want from um, Vivian Blake. So when Gary Man did say Vivian Blake are informed on the man name, in my opinion, and again, put that simple sign man, this is my opinion. I don't think Vivian Blake did necessarily like inform on the look 87 them. I say I him did go rob the money. I think the information that Vivian Blake give the feds was high level information with them they really care about. Because feds not care about look at robbery down the road. They don't. Feds are obsessed with the high the high ranking money information that they want. You think you think the, the, the feds they want care Jim Brown go to America to go ask him about bad man I do things in a yard and bad man I do things in a, in a further. Then the business board them think that they want to know high level information. Who are you linking with? Which MP, which Prime Minister, or oh, you get this true. That's what the feds want to know. Right. So anyway, people, Vivian Blake, through um, his amazing deal when he pulled off with the man named Prime, you know, plead guilty and, and get sentenced to 28 years. Remind the people, Vivian Blake was pointed out. The feds acknowledged him as the leader of Show Up as responsible for 1,400 murders. I know it already. When you're the leader of an organization, if that organization killed 10 people, even one of you pull the trigger, by being the leader of the organization, are you responsible for them 10 people there? And, the, and Show Up as was blamed for 1,400 people. Vivian Blake only got 28 years. Let me tell you something, people. <laughs> people message me all the time. Sir, you think that Daniel informed? That Daniel informed? You think that Daniel talk? People, when you see when you're the done of an organization like Show Up Posse, presidential click, certain of these big organizations, and you see them money go to jail, and them do any sentence to start at 20, them get information. Let me say that again. Any any done of an organiz organization as big as Show Up Posse, as Klansman, as um, and we are talking in American cell now. We are talking the Jamaican justice system because the, the sentence was to Tesha Gate. Obviously, that, that, he, was, he was tried in a Jamaican court. We are talking about foreign. Anytime you see a Jamaican done go foreign and buck up the feds and get any sentence, we start with the number start with um, you know, the teens or the 20s. That man, a leak like an, an NWC pipe. You know, them, them pipe, the water commission every minute, then leak and a bust bust up. They might get information. There's no way the leader of Shower Posse can get 28 years in prison without giving up information. Not only that, he ended up only doing about eight because he got real sick, right? And as me and one of my subscribers were reasoning, in federal prison, people, them call it institutional poisoning. The whole heap of the water were in the federal prison system. For some reason, when the man them go in there, them text anything wrong with you. If you're not going there with a bulletproof immune system, you mash up fast. Any sickness you have, get 10 times worse. Uh, that's where the, the, the conspiracy comes from where people say the federal prison take time to kill off people because the water we drink, the food we eat, for some reason, you make the man them with away very, very fast. Very, very fast. Right? Anyway, people, Vivian Blake um, did have a kidney problem. Right? And you may not get released from prison early as I said after about eight years or so right and he was now on his way back to Jamaica he came back to Jamaica in uh, January 2009 if my memory serves me correctly right and he went to um he went behind bars about 99 2000 so I said about eight years but in an interview he said he spent 15 years behind bars now I think he's he's including um, sentence that he did before he ended up with a big sentence, right? Because obviously, then they go in and out a couple of times, right? But people, there's an interview online of Vivian Blake. You can Google words Vivian Blake, set the record straight, and you can read the interview for yourself. But a couple of things stand out to me in the interview, and one of them was when G Vivian Blake mentioned an attempt being made in his life when he first came back into the country. Because remember, people. Vivian Blake did have all this information. The psycho um, people said Jim Brown was taken out because he knew too much. People that said the same thing about Vivian Blake. He's going to be taken out because he knows too much. Right? And Vivian Blake said this. And I quote, somebody asked him about the rumor. So somebody tried to take an attempt on him life. People, listen to what Vivian Blake said. I quote, There's something that was strange, very strange. I don't know how to put it together. But I went to court yesterday. 
I went to the Supreme Court yesterday on a civil matter. And I remember that when I went to the front where the officers were, I had to give my name. And everybody's eyes look up. So I said, yes, it's me. So I went and I deal with the civil matter. My son was there, my daughter was there, my wife was there, and another friend. So we came and we dealt with the civil matter. When I was coming now, I kind of delayed. I sometimes have some kind of sixth sense, you know. I kind of delayed and waited for my kids and my wife to come downstairs. Because I sent for my car to park right out at the front. My driver told me when he parked, he saw two policemen there. And he's saying after the fact that they looked away. He just didn't like how they looked. I came out. When I came out, my family was behind and I was in front. And I see them and for some reason I know this is something, this is a strange happening. They're staring at me and one have him on and I'm caught. And they're staring at me with criminal eye. Called criminal, no criminal. Let me stop right there, people. This is when Vivian Blake. <laughs> I don't know if he was if, if he was a part-time comedian or what, but people. This is the part that it, where he starts to show. Right, because one thing, he never denied who he was. Right, he never denied who he was. Listen to what Vivian Blake said in regards to these police officers who he must say are criminal. But then, he must say because he's a criminal, he's no criminal. So let me continue. And I quote again, Call criminal, no criminal. And I stop. And I wait to see my family them come out of the courtroom. And I walk and I stare at them. And me and them stare at each other. It's a vicious stare. I told my family, because my family had their cars, you know. I said, listen, everybody drive with me. And they're wondering what I, what, and I said, come in the car. And I'm staring at them, and them staring. And I'm seeing one coming from the other direction, over the other side of the street. And he's staring at me. I wasn't in the driver's seat. I was in the passenger seat. So why are you staring at me? I'm looking serious with him shirt hanging out of his pants. Feel like he's somebody coming to fire some shot. I look at the policeman. You know what? I said to my family, you see these two policemen there? And the other one across the street. They want to kill me. It's just a feeling. So what I did? I drive and drop my kids off, drop my wife off, and my daughter, and me and my son and another friend drive to Tivoli Gardens. That is my community, right? And I stopped in my community, and I'm telling somebody the incident, what happened, and how I felt. Right? So basically, people, the police, them, according to Vivian Blake, him see the police, them come, and based on the real Oldman profile, them come to take him life. Right? So I'm quickly drop off him family and drive to a garden, because, of course, um, he felt the garden was a safe haven for him. And because of his name, even though some people have that informal thing attached to him, at the end of the day, him name Vivian Blake, him still have to have some kind of support around there and somebody who he can fall back on, right? So people, check out that interview online, Vivian Blake, set the record straight, right? Very interesting interview, it goes into a lot of details. But people, um, one of my subscribers was telling me that when Vivian Blake came out to Jamaica, right? He was staying at a hospital in Jamaica and he was on a ward where only him alone was on that ward. Vivian Blake was so well connected and he still have a bag of money and still have links. When he went to this hospital, the rest of the ward got emptied out. Right? This is not this is not like public or, or UC or any big hospital, right? But one of the small hospitals, but the entire ward got emptied out. And Vivian Blake was on that ward. And everybody who came in and out of that ward had to get searched for them phone, any kind of wiretapping, any kind of they, they, even even any kind of device that can transmit information couldn't go over Vivian Blake ward. He was highly protected. And some of the most powerful and influential people went to visit Vivian Blake in his final days. Right? Even though he had fallen from grace and what he had been through, Vivian Blake was still a very powerful and connected man. He still had friends in very high places and he had enough of them secret. Enough of those people are probably glad the day went and it may say Vivian Blake drop out because he ended up dying with a lot of secrets and a lot of information. However, those information or that information could have already been passed to the feds because a lot of Jamaicans, when them not hear the feds make a move, they assume say them not get information. No, people, the US feds will, will get information from an informer and sit down on it for 5, 10, 15 years before them act. So there is no telling what them know. The psycho people say, well, oh yeah, sir, if he said, do us inform because we don't hear about none. If he did, you wouldn't hear nothing yet. People have to understand the feds are different ball game. The feds is not um, your, your local, the feds is not Huntsby a police station, right? 
trust me people you don't know they may get them information know them want know and sit down on it right so people that is vivian blake in my opinion the most intelligent than jamaica has ever seen and again put that in context he was a traditional bad man walking along on the road kick it down and tell you what done i'm talking about leader of a criminal organization now for somebody who was the head of show up see, you would think say their funeral would be a huge circus like all the other than them like jim brown funeral which is over thirty or thousand people william Lord funeral was massive radigan bory boy all of them on the funeral was massive you would think vivian blake being who he was being as big as he was his funeral would have spoiled with people it turns out Vivian Blake funeral was probably the smallest funeral we've, um, for any big um, crime boss in Jamaican history. Vivian Blake funeral was so small, even people, even even homeless people probably get a bigger funeral than, than Vivian Blake. I heard the number was as small as 17, right? I don't know if that's the exact figure, but it was very, it was almost like a private occasion. What I know is that there was more security forces there than actual we call people go funeral patrons, um, funeral attendees. There was more police there than the actual funeral attendees. And the reason for that, well, I'll say there's two main reasons. One, remember, Vivian Blake had got the reputation of being a sellout. Tivoli people was claiming that it was Vivian Blake who, when he first get indicted, right, when police first start coming upon him, they start getting information and sell out Jim Brown and the other top man in a shower posse. So, Tivoli people were not as in love with Vivian Blake as they were with um, the, the image of Jim Brown. That was the first thing. As I said, he had the informer tab on him. The next thing is, remember, Vivian Blake was not a traditional Don. He was not the, the man that people are see every day you know, them face and he can go link him, him sort all this stuff. People never have the connection with him with Vivian Blake like what they did have with Jati and Dodos and Jim and they had done them right because them did really see Vivian Blake them time. Vivian Blake is a foreign around show up past it. So he never had the same attachment. Right? The people Vivian Blake funeral was very small. Some people say oh the family don't want this small. Listen, family can't want Dan funeral small. If it doesn't matter what the family claim. When you are the Dan, when you're Jim Brown, when you're Dodos, when you're when you're Jati and them people there, when are your funeral, you can't tell inner city people say them not come. You can't tell them that they might come see me, right? So the reason why his funeral was smart is because the people them don't want to go. But that fact, no people from Garden didn't even know him are buried. They didn't care that much. It wasn't the excitement, wasn't building. Nobody cared, right? It's a shame for the ending. What that fact, some people actually say, right? The people them who remember Vivian Blake will tell you, Vivian Blake got it too easy. I remember the first time somebody said that to me, right? So Vivian Blake, the way he passed away quietly, right? Um, he got it too easy considering what happened under his leadership in Shawapasi. And that's something you'll hear enough people say, right? Because obviously, more, almost than the gold, most than the gold, either by being fling in a jail for 100 years or they get killed. Vivian Blake, tech sick and died from health causes. Anyway, Patreon squad, dig up on yourself. Please like, comment, and share the video. Bless.